been roughly 19 years since we heard anything from our blonde haired bounty hunter, or at least if we don't count the Prime games with it. And this absolute piece of dog shit. The 2D Metro games always have been the focus in the eyes of many fans, and the Prime games were a nice touch and nod to what the FPS genre and the fans who always desired to see the world from Samus' point of view. Metroid as a franchise was never the popular kid around the block. Sales were decent, with the Prime game selling roughly 2.8 million copies and Metroid Dread selling 2.7 million. Something about these games just never appealed to the bigger fan base like Mario games or Zelda games have. The moment that this franchise was on absolute life support was when Metroid Zero Mission released. I mean, it wasn't too bad just yet, but the game didn't sell too well. It sold less than a million copies worldwide, so the focus and the fanbase wasn't too big. The Prime games, on the other hand, sold decently. Both Prime, Prime 2 Echoes and Prime 3 Corruption hovering around the 1.2 million mark, but all the other games, Pinball, Hunters, <coughs> Boulder M, Federation Force and Samus Returns never hit the 1 million mark in sales and meant that this franchise sooner or later would probably see its demise. Especially after games like Federation Force and... I don't even want to say that name. There was barely any hope left. But then, after actual years of silence and nothing but rumors, hope, Nintendo showed us this. This trailer was a godsend in the eyes of Metroid fans. After years of nothing but hope and bitter despair, we got footage of an actual new Metroid game, and a good one that is. This trailer brought back so many emotions for the franchise that I thought I had lost, that nothing else but this could be the masterpiece that it deserved. Though there was still the issue that Our Lady Aaron isn't as popular around the block as the other games, and that has a good reason, I think. It probably has to do with the fact that you're always alone, and you have to find a story in between the broad lines that you get throughout your missions. It's never the same as a Mario or Zelda game, where the story is quite clear. You always need to look in between the puzzle pieces, I guess. The original games just gave you briefings or let you go your own way and the prime games let you scan most structures and info stations so that way you could puzzle the entire premise together but this means if you don't care about hearing every briefing or scanning every terminal that you see you are not fully grasping the story of the entire game and you just get the feeling of oh i gotta stop the space pirates once again from grabbing the metroid but fans who like this aspect and and, and this approach finally got a banger after waiting for 19 years. Metroid Dread is the one game in the franchise that raises the bar once again for all new entries, but it doesn't change the, the fan favorite gameplay that it always had. Hell, this game even has Samus speaking for two whole lines, so that's a new thing, but it doesn't change the broad lines that it always used to be. Not only that, but in Dread we finally got to see what the consequence of Parasite X was and how Samus got her chosen suit and powers, or at least the people who didn't already know, knew that in an instant in this game. It takes you back to the beginning and to the end of this entire story. Metroid Dread just feels like a genuine game that both fans and new players need, want and probably deserve at some point. The queen of Metroidvania's return to take back her crown and give all the fans what they desired. A compelling story that's easy to follow and with a good twist in it too and will make you feel like you've been betrayed by the entire galaxy once again. I'm probably not the only one who will say this but Metroid Fusion always was my favorite game in the entire franchise. The atmosphere was great, the story was beyond my expectations and the fights and, and, and look of the game were insanely cool. And Dread just adds to that, it adopts the Formula X that Fusion had and expands it. This game not only looks amazing, it feels amazing and has one of the greatest stories in the entire franchise, or at least to me. And let's be honest, the success of this game doesn't only lie with the fact that it brought back the original feeling and, and, and gameplay of the original games, it also has to do with the fact that it launched with a Nintendo Switch OLED model that looks breathtaking. And I'm not talking about the system, the entire game looks breathtaking on that. And with this boost in popularity, I, I wonder what happens next with the entire franchise. It's finally starting to get the love and affection it always needed and deserved, and brings nothing but opportunities for new games that 
aren't pure ads. Maybe they won't revolve around the Metroids like we already know, but at least our gold-haired Samus will be around for another extra couple of years and we'll probably see nothing but good games. Now we just gotta wait patiently for Metroid Prime 4. With the development restarting around three years ago, I just hope that they're well on the way with their game. But above all is that they have a genuine good game that fits the entire family of the top tier Metroid games and just fits the entire franchise. Because we all know that a couple that didn't really do too well. Let's hope we see something new soon, but it's better to have a great game than half of a game at launch. That's why I am genuinely happy when Nintendo delays some of their games. And same goes for Metro Prime 4. So let's wait, give Retro Studios all the time they need and hope on stunning results. I think we get nothing but that. It's just a waiting game and until we get something new, I'll just be patiently waiting, playing all my other Switch games with every one of you. See you next time.